Well, hello there. You join me here, back in my garden, on a Sunday. It's about uh, quarter past 12. And uh, yeah, I came home from my boat yesterday. What a day that was. Started off at half past five. <laughs> Made myself a coffee because, you know, it's like when you get up early in the morning. Um, yeah, so I did my rounds at uh, six o'clock. Had breakfast at seven. Um, the uh, My taxi turned up at half past eight. That took an hour to get to the train station. So that was nine o'clock. And so we we managed to... Uh, to uh, work our way to the train station. The train left on time at eight minutes to 10. And uh, we got outside Edinburgh. We sat there for four hours. It wasn't the train driver's fault. Somebody had committed suicide on the line, I believe. <clears throat> or somebody was hit by a train. Not sure exactly what the story was, but um, yeah. Anyway, so I must apologize in advance if there's any wind noise because I'm not using my normal camera. I'm using my backup camera because I haven't unpacked yet. All my suitcases are still in the hallway because uh, I didn't get home until about half past eight yesterday evening. Whoa, shattered, absolutely shattered. All that time on the train. And uh, yeah, the guy sat next to me had terrible bad breath. And he kept looking out the window, breathing at me. I was I had the window seat and he had the aisle seat, so he looked across and he was breathing at me all the time. And boy, did he stink. Absolutely dreadful. Uh, anyway, what can you do? You can't say anything, can you? You can't be rude and tell him to, to breathe, breathe the other way. You'll just It was horrible. I had, to, I had to go like that half the time just to try and shield myself from the stench. Yeah. Anyway, it's so surprising really how people don't catch themselves, you know. But anyway, I digress again. But yeah, look at this sunshine now, look. It, yesterday morning, it was absolutely tipping it down. As we drove uh, from Peterhead to Aberdeen, the weather was absolutely hor horrendous. And the cloud levels were quite low, really. We, as we climbed up a couple of hills, we were into the clouds and out of the clouds. Um, yeah, so that was it's quite interesting, really. I did enjoy the drive. It's quite a lot of scenery uh, around in Scotland, which is quite um, attractive and nice to look at. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't really get much uh, done on that. I didn't look out the window very much, but I did um, sit and look through some of the, my my YouTube videos, uh, not the ones that I made, but other people made. Um, I do like looking at some of these videos and uh, some of the stuff that's coming out. Um, we're hearing now that this ULES is going ahead. Uh, we found out that um, some police woman who arrested an autistic child because she said she looked like her lesbian grandmother. I can't believe that. That's absolutely horrendous. And I, I do hope the police have made an apology and are prepared to pay compensation for this outrageous arrest. Uh, for, for one thing, I understand that police cannot be the complainant in this situation. I think the judges have already ruled the fact that the police are exposed to this kind of uh, language and behaviour all the time, so they should be less sensitive to it, I suppose. But anyway, I digressed again. Um, what else was there? Uh, what else has happened? Oh yes, that woman has been found guilty of murder. Now, I think in this instance, we should bring back the, the death penalty. She was, from what I understand, she left notes uh, admitting her guilt. And uh, so the death penalty would be one and truly deserved in this case I think whereas you do get other stories there was a man I believe who spent 17 in 17 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit now if they had used the death penalty back then he wouldn't have been able to be released so the death penalty has to have some form of uh, regulation where it is beyond doubt that the person is guilty if they admit guilt if they if they've left notes 
that are not meant to be seen admitting guilt, then that, that should be enough to, to get a, a death penalty, um, you know, to go ahead and have that done. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, got, it's one of those things where you would feel terrible, terribly guilty if um, the person you sent to the gallows was, uh, was, was innocent. Like that, like that man who spent 17 years. And what I can't understand is why did he have to pay back his room and board for those 17 years that he was wrongly imprisoned? That's that's absolutely disgraceful. You know, he should have been. He should have had compensation. He should have had several millions of pounds for being jailed for so long. But anyway, it's um, it's something I need to read up on a bit more. I think. Anyway. Oh, the, the, uh, oh, the, I just noticed what my wife's been doing in the garden. She's uh, cut, cut back on the, on the plum tree. She found a plum, apparently. She sent me a picture of her plum. And um, what else has she done? You know, the lawn's a bit too much for it at the moment. I think it's too big, so I'm going to have to go over with the strimmer. Get rid of all the dead stuff. Uh, what else has she done down there? I think she's been, she's been doing quite a lot in the garden. So I haven't really looked, really. I've only been home with well, outside for a few hours this morning, just enjoying my coffee and uh, soaking up some of this sun, which didn't seem to get much, did we, all of July and part of August. We haven't had much sun at all. But anyway, like I said the other day about um, the BBC getting its facts wrong, the BBC declared that, that July was the warmest ever on record. That is absolutely correct if you ignore all the other historic warm periods in time. Yeah, you don't have to go far, back far. Roman times were much warmer than they are now. But the BBC have forgotten about that, haven't they? No, all they just seem to think is, if oh, if we just measure the temperature last year and we compare it to this year, oh, it's slightly warmer this year, so it must be the hottest time ever. Yeah. And then what else are the BBC pushing out at the moment? Um... Yeah, the BBC are pushing uh, for this um, thing that they do in the arm. You can't say it because of uh, the algorithm. Uh, anyway, so that's about it. Then I'm home. Home, I'm going to do some more videos. I'm going to try and get the dog out a bit more, get him um, out with the camera. Uh, so I've got the tiny, 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 tiny little Insta 63 uh, Go, that t tiny camera. I'm going to stick that on his back again. And uh, see if we can get some some of him sniffing around bushes and stuff. You know what he's like. <clears throat> anyway, so that's about it for today, Sunday, and uh, we'll get back to the get back to some decent video. I say I've got lots to do. I've got lots of I've got uh, a review of some uh, some wireless microphones. I've got review of static microphones that go on the side of the camera just here, and uh, <clears throat> all sorts of things, and. Uh, I might even do some uh, a, a quick, little quick review of this lens that I bought. Uh, I, I managed to uh, get hold of a, a 100mm lens. It's fixed focal length uh, of 100 mils, and it's got a very wide aperture. It's 2.8, I do believe. Um, and that's what I've been using for my macro photography. So I might just do a little, little video on that and uh, exactly what, how, I do some of my macro photography. It's quite interesting really, I do enjoy macro photography. It takes, takes a little bit of setting up, but yeah, it's worth it in the end. Um, anyway, so while that aeroplane's going off, I'm going to say goodbye, and I'll catch you all on the next one. See you then, bye.